Hello viewers, the other day I took a quick look at the battery boost sleeves that supposedly allow you to use more of the energy in a battery. I asked what I should do with these and there was a bit of a mixed response. People said blow them up, flush them down the loo, <laughs> crush them, do some testing on them etc. So yeah, a bit of a mixed response. But I did know that some of the EV blog members were doing their own testing. Um, there was quite a few people active in that so I thought I'd at least try and get something, some kind of data out of them before we do anything irreversible to them. So essentially the battery is a boost converter. It boosts the input voltage from the battery to a higher voltage. The boost converter can use the lower voltage from a so-called flat battery, uh, which might not work with the device you're using because there is often a cutoff voltage in electronic devices. Uh, basically a minimum voltage the device needs to operate. The battery can boost the battery voltage to allow your device to keep working. Um, well, that's the theory anyway. Of course, this is great on paper, but it's very, very complex in the real world because the battery will have its own efficiency losses. Also, as the battery voltage drops, the battery boost will increase how much current it draws from the battery in order to maintain the voltage on the output. Battery chemistry, of course, plays a role in how the voltage of the battery changes depending on the amount of energy there is left in it, and it all gets horribly complicated. This all means that because the batterizer uses energy itself, it's like when you're using it, you're taking two steps forwards and then one step backwards. Uh, in fact, it's probably worse than that indeed. It's probably more like one step forward and two steps backwards. So the testing that I did was a basic efficiency test on the AA batterizer. To do this, I used my two HP 6632B power supplies. Uh, one is set up as the supply mimicking the battery and the other one is the load mimicking the device that is being powered with of course the batterizer in between. By setting the supply to a constant voltage I can change the effective battery voltage to anything I want and see how much current the batterizer and the load is drawing at a particular battery input voltage. The other power supply is the load and is set to constant current so I can adjust how much current to draw from the output of the batterizer. You still with me? <laughs> By logging the voltage and the current of both the supply and the load, we can work out how much energy was dissipated by the batterizer, and hence how efficient the batterizer is at doing what it does. Now, I should say this test doesn't prove or disprove any of the claims made by batterizer. It's simply a basic gauge of its efficiency under the conditions that I have set up here. So uh, first off I had to remove the PCB from the metal sleeve so I can make connections to it. The PCB is slightly potted just up in there uh, with a plastic cover in a compound to protect it. To remove this I dropped the batterizer into some methylene chloride and after about 15 minutes I had a bare sleeve that I could remove the PCB from. And you can see here the um, sleeve without the protective coating on it and a PCB. Uh, this is not the actual one I use for testing. Um, I've actually removed most of the components on this one just so we could uh, see what it was like. I then took the PCB. Uh, test wires were soldered onto the PCB for the ground, the uh, load which is that one there, the supply, along with uh, some sense wires here and here. So we can measure the voltage right on the PCB and account for any losses in the wires to and from my power supplies. In my test, I set up the load at 100, 250, 500 and 750 milliamps and adjusted the supply between 0.5 and 1.5 volts in 50 millivolt steps, making a note of the values into a spreadsheet as I did it. Uh, if you want to see the results, then there will be a link in to the EEV blog forum where the results were published in a spreadsheet, along with a whole host of other results and theories from other members of the EEV blog about the batterizer. During testing, I found a few other things of note. Uh, the batterizer acts as a pass through when the battery voltage is above about 1.35 volts. Um, it does this with an efficiency of about 96 to 98 percent. Uh, this means if you have a fresh battery with a voltage of say 1.6 volts the batterizer is effectively in a sleep mode until the battery voltage drops to about 1.35 volts. 
Also, the batterizer output voltage is not fixed. Uh, people thought that it might have had a fixed output of 1.5 volts, but it doesn't. The output tracks the input voltage with a boost applied. Um, at the moment, the jury is out deciding if this is by design or accident. It's possible this is by design to allow a device's battery gauge to work when using the batterizer, because if the output was fixed at 1.5 volts, the device would think it has a full battery until the batterizer finally shuts off and the device has no opportunity to warn you of a low battery. The output voltage scales as the input voltage drops, so the boost rises from just a few millivolts at a battery voltage of 1.35 volts and up to about 500 millivolts when the battery is about flat at 0.5-0.6 volts, um, but it does vary a little bit depending on the load. As it stands, all the testing and results show that as yet nobody has found an example where the batterizer helps. So I'm going to put these up on the shelf of shame and they will stay there until I next dust off the mag stim and I have another let's blow some shit up video. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.